For the last 12 months, I've been working on restoring a very rare computer, the Tektronix 4404 AI workstation. Uh, this is a computer that, while the Xerox Alto came out in 1973, this came out in 1982, 1983, and uh, is arguably um, you know, one of the very, very early uh, computers with uh, GUI and uh, it had Smalltalk uh, as its primary language um, and uh, influenced certainly uh, the you know, and contributed to the uptake of things like the Macintosh um, you know, in a few years later. Uh, so today I want to get into um, where I'm up to with this computer. So here we have the back of the computer. Um, here's the uh, serial number and um, so we've got uh, a number of different peripherals. We've got this big uh, mass storage interface uh, cable, which I'll come to. There's a copier, which is Centronics uh, computers, RS-232. And then we have a mouse and the ethernet. The ethernet is a very early ethernet. Um, and this enormous thing is a very early SCSI uh, cable um, that is used to connect uh, this uh, the actual workstation to a separate um, uh, storage unit. Uh, and because it's an early Ethernet, um, this uh, device is needed. It, it, it does uh, sort of hardware uh, collisions of packets and uh, this uh, converts it to be able to work on a modern uh, Ethernet. Uh, the computer has a built-in self-test, um, so it tests all sorts of different uh, capabilities of the computer. Um, so uh, not just the, um, the sort of the hardware, well most of the hardware and um, or the storage as well. So the uh, display is a 1K by 1K um, smooth scrolled, hardware scrolled um, um, display. Um, it's got main memory of uh, one megabyte and an optional uh, RAM in this device as uh, an extra one megabyte making two megabytes, but you can expand that up for another three megabytes uh, to get four megabytes in total. Um, the mass storage is a, a Winchester you know, hard disk, a Micropolis back in the day, 40 megabyte. Um, the virtual memory, um, the Motorola chip that goes to the 6810, there was some kind of issue of it either not arriving in time or not working well with 6810. So Tektronix built their own MMU. It has a 2K um, page lookup um, and you know it has um, memory protection. Uh, uh, as well as, you know, so it supports virtual memory. Um, in this case, I've got, I haven't got a mouse uh, plugged in, which is why um, you know, it's failed. And it's got a very basic sound chip that does uh, three channel sound. Um, as you say, it's, it's all uh, square waves, I think. So it's not a great sound quality. Um, so booting Uniplex, which is the operating system, uh, I've actually sped it up eight times just because disks in those days were really not quick. So that's it booted up. Um, you'll notice that it, the network card prints out all these uh, routes and you have to explicitly give all the class A routes um, because sort of DNS wasn't a thing. Um, so uh, if you want to get anywhere on the internet with uh, old machines like this, you have to explicitly um, give the routes that are necessary. So we can um, we can log in. Um, system is the, the sort of is equivalent of root uh, on this computer on Uniplex, um, and you can see it's run uh, a, a DHCP request and to get its local uh, IP address. Um, and there's also I've written a NTP client um, so that it can uh, go out into the big wide internet world and uh, get a Time and date, obviously that date it has to be adjusted locally because this can't go past year 2000 for Millennium Bug. Um, so we've got uh, a disk with a whole bunch of stuff. I've written quite a lot of software uh, in the last year as I've been reverse engineering uh, Uniflex, uh, partly to understand it and partly to, you know, just to make life easier. So IF dump is something I've written that uh, writes out or reads out the um, all the different routing tables for the um, uh, for the internet, for the Ethernet cable. Um, as I said earlier, the etc. Net.db uh, you have to explicitly give all the class A um, uh, routes that you want um, to be able to access. Um, 
and then the net hosts, uh, right, sorry, uh, net hosts with a capital H um, uh, gives you um, uh, any you know, routes you want to go to. Um, but uh, although it's an early uh, implementation of an Ethernet stack, um, things like Telnet, um, you know, do work. Uh, so I can tell that to Telehack, um, and uh, I'm back in the 80s with online, you know, find jokes and things like that, all the good things. Um, so uh, that, all, that all kind of works uh, pretty well. Um, I've also you know, written a bunch of stuff like disk utils. You can see it's a 40 megabyte drive, 20 megabytes is now used. I've got a pretty much, I think, um, most software that was written uh, at the time for the Tetronix 4404 on this disk image. Um, status is the Uniflex way of doing PS and seeing what processes are running. Um, you can see that I've got um, a login shell and um, an it running, so there are things that are similar. I've been reverse engineering how status works, um, and this is my version. You can sort of see that it's similar. I've got the um, process ID is correct and the owner's right, but I've got all sorts of other things wrong. And it's literally by reverse engineering what's what's going on, um, how it's accessing the kernel um, uh, uh, tables and interpreting them, because there's obviously, well, not obviously, but there is no documentation for any of this. Um, so uh, that is sort of coming along, and I'm slowly but surely winning the battle, but it's a very long battle. Um, Okay, so there's some uh, other kind of pretty kind of neat stuff in here. One of the key things with Tetronix 4404 is that its primary language was Smalltalk, which is kind of pretty quirky. Um, and um, so if we just fire up Smalltalk, uh, it's version 1.5, um, and uh, it was, you know, obviously customized for this particular piece of hardware. Um, and it you know it runs great. I mean, it takes takes a, a few seconds to to load just because disks and you know. But there we go. That is uh, the last snapshot was in 9th of October 1986, um, and you can resize uh, windows, um, um, you know, on the on the display. Um, the other thing is that because it's a it's a hardware scrolling display, so I can um, you have to move stuff around, but I can also scroll uh, around the windows uh, over the, the 1K by 1K uh, image. It's actually only 640, 480, the actual uh, visual display. Um, so I've got all the all the normal things. I can you know, do all the small talky kind of things of you know looking at uh, uh, inspecting all the different uh, classes and methods. Um, I've, I've got ThingLab. Um, installed uh, uh, filed in with this image um, and we can you know we can sort of mess about it I mean it, it is not quick this small talk but then again a 6810 running at 10 megahertz isn't a quick machine to start with um, okay so that's small talk um, the other sort of thing I did just for sort of um, um, to make my life more bearable on this thing was write a little window manager um, that has, I've iterated a little bit on, um, you know, it's got nicer over time. Um, so uh, it just allows me to have multiple windowed shells and uh, uses pseudo terminals to, to uh, you know, be able to, um, you know, run different processes and uh, different editors and stuff like that. Um, so, I ported over um, Micro Emacs um, so that I can uh, edit files, although this does have full blown Emacs as part of the distribution. Um, it's just an enormous kind of uh, piece of software. Uh, so Micro Emacs is, is you know, much more small, is much smaller and, and uses a lot less memory and stuff. Um, but it works great, you know. Um, uh, what it is, I, I've also ported uh, GCC 1.42 um, here. Um, so as I said, I can I can run Telnet in a window session, and you know it works as you'd expect. Um, so I can open multiple windows uh, and um, you know 
just all, all, all the normal stuff. And it um, at the moment it just runs a um, a pseudo terminal um, in there, so you can just run you know commands. There is no sort of graphical uh, GUI, although there is a graphics API, two D graphics API that you can call. Um, so it's just yeah, and you can see that it's the pseudo terminal is uh, PTY02 for this uh, for this window. Um, yeah, and I say GCC minus B gives um, 1.42 um, that I um, sort of ported over. Um, it was quite a painful thing to do just because the native compiler is quite basic and unable to compile the bootstrap code for GCC. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I can run status to see what uh, commands there. It's kind of interesting. You can see the the uh, shell replacement shell I wrote, ash, uh, uses 48k um, compared to the shipped shell, which is 360k. Um, and it does most of what a regular shell does. You know, it has all the normal um, commands. It's missing a few bits and pieces, uh, but it's significantly smaller and it makes a big difference when you've only got two megabytes of memory. Um, and uh, yeah, you can type things like last um, to see, you know, what's uh, and the implementation of last is yeah fairly simple. It just looks at ACT history and just parses it um, and prints stuff out. Um, it's not very exciting, uh, but all that sort of stuff works. Quite well. I can uh, exit out um, of the window system um, by uh, just choosing the uh, quit, um, and it just dumps me out, not terribly beautifully. Um, what else? Uh, I can. Uh, one of the cool things is um, there was a. I forget um, who was, but there's a uh, on BitSavers um, a floppy disk with a little player of music uh, that I installed uh, uh, on this image, um, which is kind of cool. So uh, you can do things like this. You can do uh, play uh, Star Wars, for example, and you get the... Um, but you know, it's it's kind of neat that uh, this software that was written a long time ago still survives and uh, it's still working today. Um, so uh, I haven't done much experiments with the sound, to be honest. Um, you know, I'd like to uh, dig into it and see uh, what I can make it do. Um, but um, for now, I think um, you know my journey continues.